Are you going through a devastating circumstance that makes you conclude that God has abandoned you? Have you concluded that God has forgotten you? Cut that thought, because God is moving in your life. He's as active as the air you breathe. What you need right now is to renew your faith in Him. Therefore, open your heart to God's Word as I unveil 16 clear signs that God is moving in your life. This message is in-depth as you will learn how to move God's hand in desperate situations and those things that might block His move. Don't miss any part of this video as this might make you lose some vital treasures. And before we continue, if you are yet to subscribe to this channel, please do. God moves with His children. He doesn't leave them to wander alone. He cares for them, shields them, and guides them. This is your reality as a child of God. The only problem is that you often can't see God's moves. But the truth is that He is moving. His word in Hebrew 13, 5 says, Never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. Always remember this verse when you think God has forgotten you. He is only taking you through a season that will soon pass away and then bless you. The Holy Spirit inspired a vital truth within me today. In Genesis 1, 1, 2, the Bible says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. What is this vital truth? The Bible says the earth was formless and empty. Yet, the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. The Bible didn't expose how long the Spirit of God had been upon the waters. But even though He was there, the earth was still void and empty. Until God spoke, nothing happened. What does this imply? Your life may look empty and formless now. You may not be able to derive any meaning from your situation. But the truth is, the Spirit of God hovers around you. And in a split second, God will declare your light as He did to the flooded earth. Let this keep your heart stable through this message. God is moving in your life. And here are the signs. Number one, you've encountered setbacks and failures. No one prays for setbacks and failures. We all want to achieve our goals. But sometimes, God allows setbacks for a purpose. He allows us to fail for a reason. So, if you are generally experiencing a setback in your business or life, I need you to know that this is part of God's divine will. It is a sign that He's active in your life. He's preparing you for a breakthrough. Yes, the devil may perpetuate setbacks. However, even this isn't outside God's radar. He only allows it because failure challenges you to do better. All the multi-millionaire companies today can tell the tales of their failures. They've missed a lot before arriving at that enviable position. God wants to take you higher. So when you fail, know that this is part of God's blueprint for your life. He wants you to check yourself again and apply a better strategy. Failure gives room for learning. And when you learn, you become an expert at what you do. This is when your success will surface and you will discover that God is leading you to the next level of your life. Number two, you are going through fiery trials. You may not believe it, but God moves through your trials. He is working for you in that tough moment of your life. Trials shape you into God's design. They are not meant to break you. If you've ever seen the assembling of an automobile, you will understand trials better. The car has diverse parts. All these parts are unique in their way. However, if the manufacturer does not intricately place them together, the parts can't function. The body has to go through welding, bending of irons, smoothening the curves, etc. All through this while, they all look insignificant and useless. But when the manufacturer couples them together, they become a desirable automobile. This applies to you as well. 
those trials may look unending. However, they are part of God's plan plan. You might have nothing to call yours right now. This is only a season. It will not tarry forever. Perhaps all you have is your bed and the roof over your head. This is only a time. God is taking you through them so you can walk into all he has created you to be. The outcome of your life will surprise you. James 1, 2, 4 says, Consider it pure joy. My brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance, let perseverance finish its work, so you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. This summarizes all about your trials. God is building spiritual virtues in you. He knows you will need them in the long run. So, as you go through your trials, remember that God is actively working on your life. When he finishes, you will come out shining like gold. Number three, when it looks like God isn't hearing your prayers, he's moving in your life. This may sound absurd, but it's true. Many Christians believe that God should always answer all prayers. However, that has never been the case. Does that mean that he ignores your prayers? No. However, he may not answer you for certain reasons. And as his word says in Jeremiah, this is for your good, not evil. God sometimes delays answers to prayers because he has something better for you. You might be praying for a new job when he plans to establish a new business for you. Trust me, you cannot get that job. He won't give it to you because your place is the CEO's chair. You might pray for a wife while he wants you to work on your anger issues. Believe it or not, you can't get married until you deal with that anger. He delays your answers because he wants you to see what he sees. And sometimes, God stops the answers because the time is not right. What we most often want is not what we need. God knows this. For instance, you may be trusting God for a car. However, God will not let you have it. You will just not make enough money to buy one. Why? It might lead to your sudden death. This is how you know that God sees more than you do. God might also delay answers to your prayers if the situation will teach you some vital lessons in life. Job prayed several times for God to change his situation. He raised many questions, but God had turned his back on him. But the truth is that God had been there all along. However, he wanted Job to learn that he is the sovereign Lord who deals with men as he wills. He also used the situation to know Job's stand in him. So, don't assume God has forsaken you when it looks like he's not answering your prayers. You only need to pray that he performs his will in your life and makes everything work for your good. When you understand this rare move of God, you will have fewer things to worry about. Number four, unexpected doors begin to open. We love to place our minds on people. We are always expecting a brother or parent to help us out. However, Isaiah 55, 8, 9 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the LORD. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. These verses reveal that help may not come from where you've placed your mind. And this is for you to know that God is still in charge of your existence. He does not think the way you do. And that's because he wants to perform the unthinkable in your life. So, when unexpected doors open for you, know that God is moving in your life. You will start experiencing unexpected miracles, opportunities, and abundance. It will happen in such a way that you will know this is God in action. This kind of door will require no effort whatsoever for you to open. It will not require any man's help expertise, wisdom, or idea. It will be divine. When you experience things like this, ensure you acknowledge God. Do not take the glory for yourself. That's 
how you can keep enjoying unexpected blessings. Number five, unexpected provisions. When unexpected doors open, unexpected provisions flow in. Therefore, regardless of what you might be lacking, God will make way for you. The story of a widow in 2 Kings 4, 1-7 exemplified this truth. Her husband, who used to be a prophet, had died, leaving nothing as inheritance except debts. The creditors then decided to take her sons in place of their money. The poor widow didn't know what to do. She then ran to Elisha and narrated her ordeals. She was probably hoping that Elisha would give her some money. But that was not the case. Elisha only asked for what she had at home. The woman replied that she had only a jar of oil. Elisha then told her to borrow many vessels, close the door of the house with her sons, and start pouring the little oil into the vessels. He then prophesied that the oil would keep flowing until the last vessel. The woman did as Elisha instructed. She was able to pay the debts and live comfortably. This was an unexpected provision, and trust me, God can do this in your life as well. Whatever you've been trusting God for, a big sign that he's moving in your life is the unexpected provision coming your way. Number six, divine connection and the key aspects of your life. Divine connections are individuals that God brings your way. They are not in your life for what you have to offer. No, they are God sent to you. These are people you would never meet with your efforts. Whereas they are to play significant roles in your life. God knows about this, which is why he brings them your way. This is to let you know he will not leave you without a helper. These people might be mentors, teachers, or even friends. But by their relationship and actions towards you, you will know this is a divine connection. David always had Jonathan by his side, but Saul wanted him dead. It was not a coincidence that the son of his prime enemy loved him at first sight. This is God at work. If Jonathan had supported his father, it might have been easier for him to take down David. God connected their souls to ensure his will come to pass. This was how God moved in the life of David. So, when God connects you with people, he is at work in your life. Number seven, God affirms his promises through his word. God's word has proven to be effective throughout the ages. The patriarch and matriarch of old has rested on it, and it has never failed them. When they need guidance and direction, they run to no other source but the word of God. That's because God's word is God himself. So, to know if God is at work in your life, you need not use any medium. You only need to go to his word. If he had given you several promises about your life, you can be confident that his word will confirm it. Have you ever stumbled on verses that resonate with your circumstances? This is God coming out to you. He's trying to let you know that he remembers you. It might even be through a preacher. He might speak a word that will capture everything you've been asking God to do. When you experience these things, that's God's word confirming his acts in your life. Number eight, you derive joy in surrendering to God. Many times, we always want to have our way. It's difficult to hand over the control of our lives to another being. But when God is moving in your life, you will derive joy in surrendering to him. His will may not look like what you want at the moment. However, you will find yourself accepting what he wills for you. God is taking you through this path so that you will have no one else to look up to except him. He is building your trust and hope in him alone. And when you sincerely derive joy from this, you are willing to allow the Holy Spirit to have his way. So, my question to you now is, have you surrendered all? I hope no part of your life is still hidden from God. Are you still holding more than enough? I implore you to release all now and let God have his way. However, no matter how debilitating it might be, Ensure you let the joy of the Lord fill your heart as you surrender. Be rest assured that God is ready to replenish and folds whatever you release to him. 
If you've released an old past life, know that God will give you a new life to you. Number nine, you go through unclear peaks and valleys. Our journey in life can be windy and unclear. There may be days when you are on a very good highway. There are no potholes or any technical problems. But at times, a very high mountain might confront you, and you don't have a choice. You have to climb. There are days you will need to walk a steep valley where you must be very careful. These are seasons that God artistically inserts into your life's journey. The highway season is when all seems to be well with you. You are happy and fulfilled as a person. It looks like there won't be any problem. This is God moving prosperities and blessings around your life. You should acknowledge him and pray that the season won't be over. However, this isn't always the case. God might decide to take you through a mountainous path. This will require more effort and agility from you. This is your season of adversities. God is waiting to see your choices in these harsh days. Will you still hold on to him or give up? Then the valley season is your season of triumphs. Here, God wants to know the level of your faith. The road will be very slippery and you might fall. Sometimes you may feel you are going down. However, God is training you. You wonder why God allows these curvy ways in a man's journey. Here is why, to make you know that you have no control whatsoever over the direction of your life. You don't even know what lies ahead. This is to tell you that he determines your future. Number 10, divine interruption. Most times, we don't want anything to obstruct our plans, but God knows better. That is why he can decide to interrupt your plans with his plans. You shouldn't see this in the wrong light because God has a reason for it. Divine interruptions are works of grace. God wants his perfect will to surface in your life. You must never see divine interruptions as a disruption. Rather, they are a greater form of divine intervention. God might see that you are already walking out of his purpose meritally. He can then create a sudden and unexplainable conflict between you and your fiancé. When this happens, go to God and confirm if this is from him. If he confirms it as a divine interruption, that means he's moving in your life. This interruption is to save you from a major heartbreak. God can interrupt your job or business. He can interrupt your education or anything else. Whatever it may be, never see God as an intruder. Rather, see him as the sailor of your boat. He has the right to sail you in any direction. At the end of the day, you will be grateful to God that he intercepted your plans. Number 11, you are walking towards purpose. You are not a medical mistake. God created you for a purpose. God wonderfully and carefully made you. So, when he is at work within you, he will always stir you toward achieving this purpose. You won't walk with the wrong company, nor will you make the wrong decisions. Are you thinking about your physical challenges or weaknesses? Are you struggling with a terminal disease? This makes you feel that God doesn't have a purpose for your life. That's not true. God has a purpose for you. You can fulfill this purpose in your current state. You only need to remain silent before him and try to understand why he made you that way. When you do this, you will discover that God has been moving in your life. Colossians 1, 16 says, For in him were all things created, in the heavens and upon the earth, things visible and things invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things have been created through him and unto him. This verse makes it clear that God created all things for himself. So, irrespective of how you look, your disabilities, your origin, or your lineage, God has created you to do something, and this is a sign that he is moving in your life. 
Joseph had a dream that he would become great. He dreamt that the sun and the moon bowed before him. But then, for the first half of his life, it wasn't looking like he would become anything. He was only falling into one problem after the other. Ironically, God was propelling him towards purpose. If he had not been in Egypt, he wouldn't be able to interpret the king's dream or offer a solution. Number 12. God heals your physical and emotional wounds. Do you feel wounded and heartbroken? Your family might have neglected you. Your partner might have cheated you. All these might have caused you to close your heart to anything joyful. You believe that you can ever laugh again. Listen, God can heal your wounds. Either physically or deep within your heart, God can heal you. Don't forget, he is the balm of Gilead. And as a loving father, he does not want you to wallow in self-pity, feel discouraged or sad. Irrespective of how long you've been treated in the past, remember Psalms 30. 5 says, Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. Trust God to heal you. This is how you know that he is moving in your soul. You will experience the joy of salvation. He will make you whole, and you will know no sorrow again. Number 13. Increased sense of gratitude. Gratitude is the key to attracting God into your life. When you meditate on how God has been so faithful to you, if you want him to do more, contemplate what he has done and keep thanking him for them. Even if they are little to you, you should give a big thanks. Many believe that God has not done anything in their lives. So why should they thank him? These people do not have any sense of gratitude because they're spiritually blind. If God should open your eyes to the unseen battles surrounding you, you will thank him forever. He is the one fighting these battles, his host. He ensures that you sleep soundly and wake up at the appropriate time. Even if you are struggling with anything, he keeps you alive. That is a sign of hope. So, as a living being, ruminate from the smallest to the biggest thing God has done for you. Then, open your mouth in gratitude. That's your password to more. Number 14. Divine Confidence to Walk a Path When God is with you, no fear will reign in your heart. You will not be afraid to start an endeavor. That's because you have heard from the creator of the universe. He's the one directing your path. He's leading your way while you follow. Divine confidence is not self-confidence. It's not believing that you can do something all by yourself. Rather, it is believing that God can do all things for you. Philippians 4, 13 says, I can do all this through him who gives me strength. When you are sure of this, God is moving in your life. He is the anchor of your soul. Have you ever meditated on what gave the three Hebrews so much confidence? It's because they knew that God was in their lives. No one would love to dare place their hands on ordinary smoke talk, more of a furnace. These three boys saw the furnace but still stood on their feet. No one in history had beaten their confidence. So, if you are always fearful, you must go back to God and renew your stand with him. It's possible that you are yet to make him the anchor of your soul. Number 15 whispers of peace amidst uncertainties. When God descends into an atmosphere, every element bows before him. So, when you experience peace amidst the turbulence of life, that's a sign that God is with you. Nothing bothers you because they have to bow at God's feet. Yes, the situation may be unwelcoming. You might be in the middle of a storm. You might be struggling with your health. All these won't matter to you because God is in charge of the situation. You won't have to worry about anything. This brings to mind the story of Jesus and his disciples on the stormy sea. They were on a voyage to another town when the sea became boisterous. Jesus' disciples were struggling to save the ship, while ironically, his disciples then cried out to him to save them before they all drowned. When Jesus woke up, 
he didn't face the storm. Rather, he first rebuked his disciples. He told them that they had little faith. What does this mean? Jesus was expecting his disciples to be at peace, just like him. He had shown himself as the Son of God, yet they couldn't acknowledge that nothing evil would happen to them with Jesus in the boat. So, don't let anything bother you. Learn to look for that gentle whisper of peace. That's a sign that God is with you. Number 16. God will restore all that you have lost. Irrespective of what you have lost, God can restore them. You might have lost your child, business, or opportunities. When God arises for your help, you can give birth to triplets at once. Your business will thrive again and you will hit more opportunities. God can do all these to let you know that he is Lord over your life. The enemy might be rejoicing that he had successfully had his way in your life. That's just for a fleeting moment. By the time God shows up, all your wealth and prosperity will run to embrace you. Job received twice of all he had lost. Therefore, you can trust God to do the same in your life. Now that you know how God would move in your life, you need to know what you should do to ensure this. Therefore, what does God expect from you? First, you must be willing to live all your life for him. God rules in the affairs of men. Yes, however, this is only to men who had submitted themselves to him. If you still choose to lay hold of a portion of your life and then give the rest to God, you are not ready to see him move in your life. God has to take absolute control of your life. When this happens, he will channel your life to the right course. The next thing you should do to align with God moves in your life is obey all his instructions. Many Christians want to see miracles happen in their lives. However, they consciously or unconsciously disobey God's commandments. If you fall into this category, you are not ready to experience God. Open his word and get to know what he wants you to do. Then set your heart to obey, irrespective of what it might cost you. And as you obey him, ensure you reference him in all you do. Don't assume that you know how to go about it all. When you become successful in your endeavors, give thanks to him. If he had not moved in your life, it would be impossible for you to achieve anything. Before you start a task, go to him and confirm if that's his will for you. The book of Proverbs says you should acknowledge him in all your ways, and he will direct your path. So, always remember to reference God. Never hesitate to show how important he is to you. Also, don't envy others' success. Don't be jealous of anyone. You need to know that God has ordained a specific time for each individual. You can't jump his time for you. You can't do anything to change it. So, avoid envying those whose time has come. Yours is also coming. You only need to keep waiting patiently for the Lord. That's how you can make him work in your life. If you don't, you might end up making some decisions that might hamper your destiny. Then, learn to walk by faith, not by sight. Many Christians want God to do something great in their lives. However, they neglect their link to receiving from him, and this link is faith. When you walk by faith, God releases your heart's desire to you. But when you walk by sight, you are limiting God. You are judging your life by what you see. That's a terrible way to live. You need to see beyond your nose. You need to have faith that God will promote you even though you have nothing now. Another thing you should do is meditate on God's word. If you don't understand his word deeply, you might not receive anything from him. Why? God guides and directs through his word. So, if you shut your mind from his word, he won't have any means of communicating with you. Read his word every day. Study and meditate on it. God will move tremendously in your life. And as you study God's word, give time to prayer. God won't do anything if you don't ask him. So, 
If you want him to turn your situation around, speak to him. Jabez knew his situation wasn't worthwhile. He got tired of poverty and cried out to God. God didn't disappoint him. He enlarged his coast and made him the head of his household. God can do the same for you today. However, you need to ask him. You need to open your heart to him. While doing this, ensure you come with a heart of gratitude. Many only complain they don't pray. Even if you think that God has done nothing for you, the tiny blessings in your life should be your basis for thanksgiving. Thank God for the air you breathe. Thank him for the ability to see, move, and even talk. These are little instances of God's hand in your life. God loves a cheerful heart. When he sees that you are always cheerful and full of life in his presence, he will move mountains on your behalf. Listen, if you can do everything I have told you today, trust me, God will perform wonders in your life. But then, it's not enough to know what to do. You need to know what to avoid as well. You need to understand those things that can stop God from moving in your life. And the very first one is fear. You can't enjoy anything divine if you are always anxious. You need to let go of all uncertainties. Trust the God who knows your beginning, present, and future. Another thing to avoid is disobedience to God's instructions. God doesn't take pleasure in sin. Yes, he doesn't hate you. Yet, he can't touch you when you are in equity. That's because you are under Satan's rule. Yes, he's the spirit that works in the children of disobedience. God can't help you there. You need to come out first. Then, he can start working on your life. Therefore, what are the petty sins in your life? What are the things that still make God cry over your soul? Do you steal? Do you lie? Are you enjoying the hidden sin? If you still do all these, you disobey God's commands. And that's why he is finding it difficult to work in your life. Let go of all these things and watch him move mightily in your life. Also, avoid trying to figure out things yourself. God is a jealous God. You are taking his place when you sit and start drawing plans outside his guidance. The effect is that he will step aside to see how far you can go. But how far can you go without your maker? What can the clay do without the porter? Nothing, right? That's how it is with you as well. You can't do anything good without your maker. Very close to this is pride. Perhaps God has started moving you into the peak season of your life. You are going higher, and several people already identified with you. The moment you start glorifying yourself, God will start reducing your impact. And aside from this, he will allow the devourer to taste your resources. I bet you don't wish this to happen. So, stir clear of pride. Be humble and teachable. When God sees that you keep bending your head as he's elevating you, he will love to do more in your life. That's the secret. Another thing to avoid is impatience. If you're going through trials, don't try to escape it yourself. No. Stay there. Endure the pains and learn the lessons. That's why God allowed it to happen. He wants you to learn some spiritual virtues you would never have if you had abundance. So, be patient and keep enduring the season. God is with you, and the tides will soon turn in your favor. Remember that God will never forsake you. As you obey his will, he will move in your life. Don't lose faith. Watch out for the signs and give thanks to God irrespective of the situation. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your soothing words. You have shown me the signs that you are working in my life. Now, I know that I am not alone on life's journey. You are actively behind me, pushing me toward purpose. Please forgive me for all my wrongdoings. Forgive me for walking in ways that I shouldn't have. I confess 
all my wrong choices before you today and ask that you redirect my steps to your will. O oh God, I humbly come before you, acknowledging that you are moving in my life. You are the sovereign Lord who orchestrates all things according to your perfect will. I surrender my heart, my plans, and my desires to you. Father, I pray that you continue to move mightily in my life. Guide me in every step I take. Lead me along the path of righteousness. Give me the wisdom and discernment to know your will and the courage to follow it. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Empower me to live a life that brings glory to your name. Lord, help me to trust in your timing. When things don't go according to my plans, grant me peace and the assurance that you are working for my good. Strengthen my faith and remind me that your ways are higher than my ways. As from today, I seek your guidance in every decision I make. Open doors before me and close the ones that are not meant for me. Help me to see your hand at work, even in the midst of uncertainty. May your presence continue to be evident as I surrender myself to you. Lord, I am currently struggling with setbacks and failures. I know you are aware of this. Please, rescue me. Find a solution to the situations that break my heart. Protect and shield me from the arrows that the enemies send my way. Let my life reflect your love, joy, and peace. Let all those around me see reasons to magnify your name with me. Lord, help me to live a life of humility. Help me to reflect your love in all my choices and interactions with others. Pride will not destroy your glorious plans for me. Lead me to effectively channel my time, energy, and resources into fulfilling your purpose for my life. As I trust you, the more keep pushing me towards fulfilling my destiny. Help me to be sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit as he guides me in your purpose for my life. And then give me the wisdom, strength, and provision to overcome all kinds of battles to the next step on my journey. I know my trials are not mistakes. Yes, they are overwhelming, but I know there's a reason. Therefore, I pray that you help me to learn and grow in this situation so that I can give all glory to you. I ask that you endow me with the spirit of patience. Help me to continually wait for your guidance. I must not decide for you. I receive the wisdom needed to achieve my goals. Give me clarity of direction so I can plan my next steps according to your will. I pray for divine connection. Lead me to connect with trustworthy and like-minded individuals who will aid me in your plans for me. Help me to meet with mentors, pastors, or friends who will help me fulfill your calling for my life. I pray for the heart to obey your word. Give me the mind, spirit, and heart of Jesus to carry out your will. Transform me physically and spiritually to walk in my calling and to move forward in what you have placed on my heart. Father, fill me with divine confidence. Please help me to trust you in all I do. Give me the courage to step into what will make my life a testimony. I must never be afraid to declare your word. Even amid uncertainties, nothing will disturb my composure. I have learned from your words that you may decide to interrupt my plans. I choose to trust you for my provisions. You own a thousand rams upon a thousand hills. Therefore, I am sure that I will not be in want of anything good. My life will keep moving forward, and the enemy will have no say over me. Thank you, Jesus, because I know you have answered my prayers. In Jesus' name, I have prayed, Amen. Beloved, every experience, be it joyful or challenging, is part of God's divine plan for your growth and development. He sees the potential in you and is molding you into the person he created you to be. 
Even during times of uncertainty, please hold on to him. Stay hopeful and anticipate what lies ahead. God bless you. If this video has blessed you, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more inspiring messages. See you in the next one.